The next demo is about the new features in the, in the SharePoint Framework 1.16. So I'm going to show a few slides. Uh, Alex is going to do the actual demo. Um, just a quick intro. Um, one of my hats, I have multiple hat systems. I'm, I'm not sure if I, it's, that's any more true. I at least used to be a feature PM in the SharePoint Framework team. I'm, I'm closely involved in the SharePoint Framework <laughs> development and, and the next steps uh, regardless. Uh, and Alex is an ex-MVP who then decided that, well, I want to fix stuff in the SharePoint Framework and then got himself working in Microsoft, which is thank you, Alex, for joining. And he has been really, really awesome resource on, on fixing some of the things available. And even though I, I need to say, call this out loud, thank you, Alex, for that one, you at some point Point said that now all of the issues in the GitHub issue list, which you had reported, have been fixed and it still remained in the company. So thank you for that. So really, really cool. Now, wanted to recap quickly. Uh, so on the SharePoint Framework, uh, SharePoint Framework is really designed to be the easiest way to build your enterprise solutions in Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Viva, and SharePoint Online. SharePoint Framework is still a pro development experience because you are writing code. You're using industry standard web stack tooling and uh, to build uh, extensibility uh, for Microsoft Teams, Viva Connections, or SharePoint using React, Angular, or whatever is your chosen uh, framework. Uh, SharePoint Framework itself is a really cool way of kind of a hosting stuff because the hosting is free. So you don't need to worry about hosting your application outside of Microsoft 365. You will be hosted inside of Microsoft 365. So you will have access and permissions to the APIs because you are inside of the tenant. And there's a native uh, automatic single sign-on and it's really driven but kind of a design for the content driven applications, but you can of course access external APIs as well. Now, SharePoint Framework 1.16 uh, preview release uh, happened uh, last week. I would say upcoming weeks. I don't know why I'm, I, I should have updated that. It happened actually last week. And, and the main new features for now in the 1.16 preview was the top actions to support for web parts. And, and Alex is going to do a live demo around that one. We also announced that there will be a Teams JavaScript SDK v2 native support for SharePoint Framework solutions. I'm going to explain a bit more on that one in a second. And then there's asynchronous support for Viva Connection Ace rendering. So basically asynchronously render the quick views uh, for the Viva Connection, uh, which will increase the performance. In General 1.16 general availability is intended to happen by end of 2022. We don't want to give you an exact date because then we don't want to, if it's going to be a bit delayed, uh, that, that can cause problems. So we'll try to be as open as possible within our communications with the upcoming preview releases as well. In the development, um, something which, which we will talk about a bit today is the bot framework powered Viva Connection card. So this is something which we announced uh, to be coming in built. And this is really designed for ISVs which have built bot framework for Microsoft Teams, bot framework tech, uh, implementations for Microsoft Teams. And now they want to expose their uh, applications in the Viva Connection dashboard. So that's something which is in the works. And we'll see if it's going to be part of the 1.16 or the following version. So we'll see how that uh, is evolving. And also we're looking into aligning uh, the Microsoft Teams packaging model. So you might think about this one as a the unified Microsoft 365 packaging model as a zip file, almost like a Microsoft Teams zip file. Well, it is the Microsoft Teams zip file. Uh, but that zip file does not only contain the manifest, it will contain manifest, the images, and the SVP KJ files. So we're kind of aligning to that one unified model across Microsoft 365 to make it easier for customers and partners to everybody to build these solutions. More clarity, more alignment, which is always good. Now, before we go to the live demo related on top actions and uh, supported by web parts, which uh, I said Alex will show, I wanted to call out the Teams JavaScript SDK v2 native support for SPFX solution. This will be done automatically. So, which is kind of a, hey, wait, how does that work? Now, if you have an existing solution, which is hosted in SharePoint Online, and it's, it's being exposed in the Microsoft Teams area, it's using the SDK endpoint uh, in the code to get access on the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK. We'll actually update that endpoint to give you a V2 access point automatically. And then, of course, for the new applications which you're building, uh, you can take advantage within your code to JavaScript SDK V2 support and, and options. And this is all coming to the thinking where you can take advantage of the full scale options with the Teams JavaScript SDK V2, which technically enables you to build, uh, for example, Outlook extensibility with SharePoint Framework in the same way as with what was announced in Build uh, in June 2022. 
So a lot of stuff, a lot of information. We'll get more documentation on all of this and more details. Uh, what does that mean in practice and how does that is rolling out? What does it mean for existing solutions and all of that as we're getting closer? But we want to make sure that you are aware what's happening. Also a super important thing, uh, Alex uh, and the team is all the time actively looking into feedback and input from our GitHub uh, SP DevDocs issue list. We'll put the link on the chat for that one. So if you find any issues related on 1.16 or any of the things which we are talking about here, please let us know. And there's an ongoing discussions around where we should be investing as well. So if you are building on something on SharePoint framework, please let us know what is important for you. Now, let's move on to the actual demo of today and actual star of today, which is Alex Tarantiev, related on uh, the web part top actions in Viva Connection Desktop or in the SharePoint Online. Alex? Thank you, Vesa. So, let me share my screen then. So, I'll be demoing the new feature we have included in uh, SPFX 116 Beta uh, called Top Actions for the web parts. And uh, I'll start with the demo itself by showing what it actually is. So here I have a web part on the page. And uh, if you are in edit mode of the page, you see this command bar. And uh, top actions actually allow you to add your custom buttons or uh, custom drop downs, I would say, uh, to this command bar. So here in the example, I have uh, three buttons in here. One to hide or show the title of my web part. So if you click, the title is gone. Uh, click back, the title is back. The second one is the title alignment. In that case, it's not a button, but but uh, it is a drop down basically. And uh, again, if I select center, my title will be centered. And uh, another one for the this sample is kind of selecting an image. When I'm clicking on it, you see the pop up to select the image. So it's kind of basic functionality here for the demo, but um, in your actual code, you can basically react on the button and uh, launch whatever uh, custom logic you want. So uh, this is kind of a demo what uh, you can do with the custom top actions. And uh, yeah, so we've started this journey from the idea that um, we want to have some kind of plain, easier UI for the users. And uh, you don't always want to have this big property pane, especially for uh, some simple choices or simple button clicks. And uh, that's why we decided to provide this functionality. and. Uh, we are using this in uh, first party web parts too. And uh, for the third parties, this functionality will be available soon, I would say. So from the old perspective, it's pretty easy, similar to property pane uh, configuration. You have this get top actions configuration method that you can override and uh, it returns itop actions uh, interface. And in this itop actions interface, there are Two properties. One of those is top actions, and uh, here you're basically providing the array of actions you want to add uh, to the command bar. And uh, right now, the API is based on uh, property pane APIs and uh, uh, properties. So, uh, but it is right now for the first version, it just for kind of proxy API. So we have these uh, item actions interface, but inside it actually just adds the, uh, uses the same ty types as the property pane, but it will probably be a little bit changed in future. Uh, but yeah, the configuration is pretty easy and similar to property pane. So you are providing the type for the, for the top action. And currently uh, we are supporting two types. The one is button, another one is a choice group. And again, as you can see, I'm just using the function from property pane, helper function to create choice group. Inside you can provide properties as always, target property for your property of the web part, uh, some additional configurations like text, icon, et cetera, et cetera. Same for choice group, you're providing label, you're providing options that you want to have in there. And you can provide title. Well, why title? Because in top actions, uh, it's not great to have like full text, uh, full label for your buttons, for example. Instead of that, you probably want to have this beautiful tooltip. So providing the title adds this feature to your uh, buttons, which is kind of more 
pretty UI, I would say. Another important property in uh, the iTop Actions interface, so when you provided the actions itself, uh, you should provide on execute method that kind of has two parameters. One is action name and the second one is new value. And uh, action name is uh, basically the same as the target property in your top action configuration. And new value is the value that should be applied to your properties. Uh, one small remark here that for buttons, there is technically no new value. So you will always be uh, getting uh, true, like a Boolean type true. So for buttons, you probably want to just uh, execute some logic or something like that. Uh, so for example, in my case, for show title button, I'm just reversing the flag in my properties. But for title alignment, I'm just applying new property. And for open file picker, right here, I'm doing a prompt. But as I said, potentially you can uh, launch your custom logic and uh, do whatever you want. So, for example, even for this example, you could use file picker component that I believe uh, Patrick Rogers was doing the demo maybe months or so ago. And yeah, select an image not by prompt, by, but using this file picker. So as you can see, the configuration is pretty simple and familiar to you, especially if you were using property pane. So again, just two properties, top actions, and on execute, and you're good to go. A few things I want to mention. So first of all, right now we are just rolling out the support for top actions, and I would expect it to be 100% rolled out by end of uh, September. And the second one, as I mentioned earlier, so if we go to the item actions definition right now, and from here I will go to action configuration, so as you can see right now, it's just a proxy of uh, I property pane field, but uh, it will be definitely changed because it's not uh, one to one mapping. And for now, we decided to do this proxy to just allow you to start uh, thinking about uh, different scenarios, providing us uh, feedback. But uh, when we are ready to make this GA, we will definitely change it to real, real interfaces, real properties in uh, action configuration specific to top actions. And uh, back to you, Vesa. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. On that one, uh, from a timing perspective, I will jump on back on the slides and do a quick intro on the on the Viva Connect bot driven Viva Connection uh, cards, and then we'll go from there. But really, really cool. And this is a good example of why it's a great that the first party, as in Microsoft, is building on top of the same uh, tool stack. So as we want to have those kind of features in the out-of-the-box web parts, uh, you will get those as well as an ISV and the partner. Uh, so you can take advantage of them as well. Really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Alex and Dan. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. There was already questions around the pot framework driven Viva co connection cards. Uh, quickly explaining what this is all about. Basic idea is that we'll register a bot and deploy a bot on a tenant a normal bot framework with a bot, which will then connect to a Microsoft Graph and other API services, and then basically responds and reacts adaptive card events, which are then exposed in the VMware Connection dashboard in a mobile or in a desktop sign. Now, the ETA for this one is still uh, to be defined. Hopefully, it will be available a, a bit later in this autumn. Potentially, we can preview this or do a live demo on this one relatively soon, but I cannot give you an exact date uh, when this will be available. GA will happen within the next six months or so. Mm -hmm.